This news update is brought to you by. This is the 7 a.m. Barbados Today update for Friday, August the 29th, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Good morning. Barbadians are being assured that everything is being done to stave off any possible increase in the price of water. Chairman of the Barbados Water Authority, Dr. Ashley Braffitt, tells Barbados Today a rate hike is the last thing the BWA would consider even as it tries to manage its skyrocketing electricity bill, the most expensive aspect of its operating costs. The fact that we are looking at um, enhancing productivity, that is the last thing we are looking at. So, uh, price, increase. price increase only comes when um, you know you cannot enhance productivity. Price increase comes when uh, the cost of delivering services uh, is increased. And that is why I mentioned that uh, perhaps our most expensive activity at the moment is and police have made another massive drug haul. Yesterday, members of the Marine Unit and Special Services Unit seized just over 4,000 cannabis plants under cultivation at two locations in St. John. At Edgecliff, they uprooted 614 plants, ranging from seedlings to 10 feet in height, and 3,458 plants at Pot House, the tallest being 12 feet. Meanwhile, 56-year-old Amos Andrews of Fitz Gap, Bestbury Road, St. Michael, and Martin Griffith of Bay Street in the same parish are expected to appear in court today after members of the Customs Enforcement Unit found two pounds of cannabis concealed in bottle seasoning which arrived from Jamaica and placed in a cargo bond in St. Michael. Four other drug accused appeared in court yesterday. Three of them were remanded to jail until September the 25th, while the other was released on bail. There are fresh concerns this morning over the level of discrimination which still exists towards people with HIV AIDS in Barbados. HIV Food Bank Manager Stacey Whitaker tells Barbados today she knows of cases where infected persons were being openly ridiculed and shunned. Whitaker says she is at her wit's end trying to find what could be done to stop the prejudice. She says her agency had made several efforts to correct the problem, but there seems to be little change in attitudes towards sufferers of the virus. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Welcome back as we turn now to news from our neighbors. Jamaica's new acting public defender says his office isn't surprised at the recent beating and eventual death of a suspect in police custody. Matanda Makulu says the unfortunate thing is not just the death of young Mario Dean, but the shock of the nation. The acting public defender suggests that despite the many lessons, the state does not understand that human rights matters in all things. He believes wholesale change will not come about if the police and other civil servants are not properly trained to take proactive measures to ensure that rights are protected and people in custody are safe. And finally, on the international scene, the World Health Organization says the deadly Ebola outbreak in West Africa could infect more than 20,000 people before it is brought under control. The UN agency says the number of cases could already be four times higher than the 3,000 currently registered. 
It also calls on airlines to resume vital flights across the region, saying travel bans are threatening efforts to beat the epidemic. So far, 1,552 people in Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea and Nigeria have died. The BBC's Tommy Oladipo reports. So far, four countries in the region have been affected, but their fears of the growing risks their neighbors face. Efforts to prevent the spread of Ebola have been hampered by the challenge to the health systems in those affected countries. And some communities have also been hostile towards health workers. While Nigeria's first case was reported in Lagos a month ago, the crisis has not been as deadly here as in the other affected countries. But today, the government confirmed the news of an Ebola death in the city of Port Harcourt. And on that note, we end today's 7 a.m. Barbados Today update. You can join us again at noon, but in the meantime, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay in supermarkets and gas stations near you to get more news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a blessed day. This news update is brought to you by...